Hey guys, this is Dan. Um, picked up one of these great uh, tea watches from Lilico. Uh, picked it up at Tindy. Uh, relatively inexpensive, and it's kind of this great thing, right? A programmable watch, a no kidding programmable watch. Um, this thing's got an ESP32 in it, LCDC touchscreen, um, and it's programmable through what you know they claim to be the Arduino environment, a um, whole bunch of blocks environments, all kinds of things. Um, and then you get it, and you look at the sample code, you know, you finally get something working, and it's pretty difficult to understand. Their documentation isn't the best. Uh, for, for people that are just, you know, avid Arduino programmers and not C++ object-oriented programmers that use the real-time operating system to run their stuff. So I thought I'd write a short um, framework for us Arduino users so that you can actually get this thing up and operating and acting like a real watch. And I'll let you know some of the things I found. First, and probably the most important, is the button on the side of the watch is not a user-controlled button. When their instructions say two seconds on, six seconds off, that's exactly what this button does. It, it works with the hardware. Um, but from what I can tell, it's kind of neat because when the watch is turned off, they must do a good job of putting it in a very low power mode because I've noticed after a couple days, I'm, I've only lost 10 or 15% of the power. So if you hold that button on for two seconds, the watch will come up. So I wrote a framework that will display the time normally, and this is updated. You'll see the colon will flash to show you everything's going on. But because there's no user button, everything's got to be done through the touch screen. So the first thing, if you touch the screen, a little menu section will come up. And there's three sections. So the menu can have as many items on it as you want. And this is why this is a framework because you're just gonna add an item to the menu and then you're gonna add your programming. And whenever that menu item is clicked, your program's gonna run. Um, and I've added a couple programs so you can get kind of a, a little better idea of what, what are the basic ways of getting the touch values, uh, displaying things on the screen, accessing the real-time clock and things like that. Uh, so the menu works. If I hit down, I'll slide the menu up, and if I hit up on here, I'll slide the menu down, and it previews um, what that menu item is. And then if you're happy with it, you hit the center, and that's the selected menu item. So for instance, if I hit the bottom of the screen right there, this will cycle through um, Jupiter, accelerometer, battery, touch, and I can go the other way too, battery, accelerometer. Um, so, for instance, when you get where you want, if you touch that, accelerometer warms up and turns on, and I've got a little app here that shows you that your accelerometer is working. And then, of course, since there's no button in order to exit, I have you touch the screen, and that gets you back to time. Um, anytime you're done with the watch, you just hold the button down for six seconds, and that'll shut it off. Um, so there's kind of some neat stuff you can do with this. Uh, I wrote a little program to look at Jupiter's moons at any given time. So it calculates the distance of those moons and then displays them for you. And again, you touch the display and you go back to time. Uh, came up with a way to uh, show the accelerometer. Uh, I'll show you how to use the battery information. It's got a power management system. So I actually print out, if you're plugged into USB, you'll see the USB voltage and the current currently charging the phone. Um, and then you'll see the phone battery itself and then the percentage of battery left over. Um, and this is, uh, this has been pretty, pretty reliable. And, um, go in here. Uh, that's the battery. Uh, touch is just a quick little program I wrote so you can test your touch screen. It'll actually show you in the XY coordinate where you're touching. And then after 10 seconds, it'll stop. And if you touch the screen again, you see how it's all stopped. You touch the screen again, and you'll go back to time. Um, I also wrote a, um, a quick thing to set the time. I don't know that I'm that happy with it, but it works. If you go into set time, I created a little keyboard, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. The time, current time shows up there, and I've got a done button down here. So if you wanted to change the time, say it was actually 1536, the, um, the 1534 up here, the one, it's hard to see, but it's yellow, and the others are white. So if I touch the one button, the one got put into that, and now the five is yellow. So it's going to cycle through the digits. So if I go 1536, it now says 1536, and if I say done, whoops, hit it, hit it again, it'll show you that I reset the clock to 1536. 
So just a couple of utilities there, but they all kind of access different functions. So you get a better idea of how does this stuff work. Um, this gives you the framework though. Uh, if, you're, if you're an avid Arduino programmer, this is all in Arduino. Uh, I call the watch uh, function. I create a watch entity and I use some of its programming, but none of it's gonna look that strange um, like when you open up their sample watch application and it's all written in C++ and they're using the real-time operating system. So there's just a lot of um, object-oriented programming where if you're not very comfortable with it, it's hard to track down how to do some basic functions. Um, so I hope this helps. If you're interested in the watch, this may give you the uh, encouragement to go get it because now you're gonna be able to just program it in Arduino. And if you've already done some applications with Arduino and a screen, uh, like games, like the Game of Life or something like that, super easy to add to this watch now. Thanks for watching.